Let's make sure video is good. Yep, it is. And we're resuming audio. Awesome. Here comes your play retro show about Chrono Trigger starting right now. Dream Project. Dragon Ball no Toriyama Akira. Dragon Quest no Hori Yuji. Final Fantasy no Sakaguchi Hirono. I caught three things. Yeah. Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and Squaresoft. Squaresoft. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Play Retro. Yes, that's right. This is Play Retro. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Johnson, and my name is Chrono P. Trigger. And I'd like to know what it takes or will take to get you into the best shiny classic game for the Super NES today. We've got great deals here at Play Retro Auto, and uh, with every person sold, you'll get a free poorly designed Mode 7 game section. Oh, that hurts. And I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I've been to the year 3000, and not much has changed, but they lived underwater. Well, some of them. The rest of them are all, like, sad and crap. Oh, and your great, great, great granddaughter? Well, she's looking fine. <laughs> I mean, is she fine? She is fine. Okay, now quick to the time hole. We got to get back in time for some more JRPG action from 1995 where the Dragon Ball references are a plenty and random encounters are a few. Mm. You got whack because you're weak. Mm hmm. It's actually one of the things right. I love about that game is you see what you're going to fight before you fight it. And yeah. I like it. Most JRPGs. Screw them random encounters. Yeah, I don't like them. I'm not a fan. Still, no over, day. No overworld random encounters? That's my favorite part. Oh, I hate those so much. Overworld ones yeah. are the worst. In-world ones yeah. are the second worst. Uh, it's mm -hmm. what stopped me from playing classics like Final Fantasy VII to its full completion in the year 1990-07, whatever the hell it was. 1990-07. Mm -hmm. That's 1990-07. How many is that one? Now, you are Chrono Trigger. Look at you. Wow. You're, you're traveling... To the future. Yep. You're some kind of time lord. I got into that uh, the the portal while they were trying to have a fair, whatever the crap was going on in that thing. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about Chrono Trigger, and we know it's beloved, and we know we're never going to do it justice, so just know going into this that this will be our loving attempt to talk about it in uh, hallowed ways. And, uh, you know, never forget uh, the, well, the main reason that we're doing it, not the main reason, but one of the reasons we're doing it is because Akira Toriyami, the character designer of Dragon Quest and of uh, uh, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and so many other cool things, was also uh, lead artist and uh, sort of art director yeah. over this game. And we're going to talk and about his passed role. away this past week for us. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of people 15, affected so. by it because a lot of you grew up on uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Dragon Quest. Yeah, you all this stuff. Dragon. I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I watched a little Dragon Ball Z, yeah. and then I went back and watched some Dragon Ball this past week. Thanks to uh, thanks to playing this game. I can't do Dragon Ball the, the original thing. I just can't do it. But I can do Z. I actually, I actually like it because it's even closer to Astro Boy, which I already love and have, I was already kind of like on a journey with. Yeah. And so seeing the original kind of leans more into that for me. Mm -hmm. And so it's it was it was good for me to see that. I've watched Dragon Ball Z and I'm like, oh, OK, I don't, I don't see the, I can't quite see the the leap and something's missing here. And I was right. It was the original Dragon Ball from the, uh, you know, what, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z so, was yeah. more about, OK, it was the grown up. We're gonna go super saiyan. We're gonna go super saiyan, and that means the screen's gonna be full of insane crap. So get ready. Yeah. And it was a good time in that way. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk all about it. We're coming up on that in a second. But before we do, uh, speaking of anime, I've been playing a lot of games that are very, very, very Japanese. Oh, uh, and it's me. all it's all your fault. It's all Play Retro's fault because we we did that whole yeah. thing with uh, Advance Wars, and it just drug me down a, a, a hole. And I talked last week about uh, Tales uh, Tales of Arise, and uh, what was the other one? Cur or um, Scarlet Nexus. I played a ton of about eight hours of that so far. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Another eight hours of Arise, and then I also picked up this week Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. These names are terrible, but anyway, well, that they're came terrible. out. They're 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 regionalized for us, right? Isn't I think so. Idea? I don't know. It makes sense over there. It makes no sense here, but there it is. 
And that's part of a long running series that was also on mobile and stuff. This is their first like big full blown, just pay for the game and play a big epic RPG. And it is beautiful and awesome. So we've been playing that. And oh, I forgot to bring it down here, but I also picked up a PlayStation uh, Portal. Oh, what, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. You was going to use it. You didn't even put that in the notes here. You, I know. You got a place to. Please. I know. I completely forgot to tell you. So I picked that up on. I got a really good deal on one. Uh, got it in. I'm like, you know what? I really want to try that thing. See how that thing stacks up. And uh, I'll say this. It is very good at what it does. And what it does Boring is this is. one thing, which is remote play of your PlayStation 5. That's its job. It doesn't yeah. load up software on itself other than firmware and things. It doesn't do any of that. This isn't a, you know, a device, at least unhacked anyway, that will do a bunch of retro whatever. This is a game. Right. This is a device that is meant to mirror. Congratulations, your you're turned your PlayStation 5 into a Wii U. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> um the advantage here though, so far, is that the latency is nothing. Like I don't, yeah. I'm sure it's there, but I don't sense it at all. And previous to this, I had done the same process with a phone and a backbone. I did the same process with my Steam Deck, a couple other things just to try and test. None of them had I've the lack never of latency been, this does. This is really I've good. I've never been terribly impressed with Steam Link or anything that has spawned from that kind of thing. I've never been terribly impressed with that. And I should be because it should be amazing. I've been more impressed with cloud gaming than I have steam link and different mm -hmm. things i'm not saying it doesn't have its place i'm just saying i've just never been terribly impressed it's just the the latency is not what they promise or not what not what they promise it's not what it should be to be as good as it too should noticeable. be noticeable and that's it's what i think noticeable. is great about this is this thing has no noticeable input lag i don't notice any right in fact i forget that i'm playing remotely sometimes and i think well i shouldn't turn this off turn on oh wait no i'm just turning off this thing not the device mm -hmm. you know like it i forget mm -hmm. that it's just mirroring this thing um, yeah. It's very good at what it does. The battery life lasts forever. And I played way too late last night. Oh, to bring this back home. So all of these other games I'm playing, I'm getting super into them. And I come all the way around and end up playing uh, um, uh, Unicorn Overlord, which we talked about last week. You went back. Yeah, went back to that. That yeah. game is so good. And it is right connected to the to the to the um, the fire emblems of the world and the advanced wars of the world and all of those like turn-based strategy-based jrpgs this is like a modern and really good one of those it's very good highly recommend and if it. you're watching i i re-up my i re-up my country roll with that's the free watch anime for yeah. the most part and uh i so i could watch dragon ball and i every commercial i have because i had commercials i didn't do the you know the extra premium service or whatever i just did the commercial ones Everything is Wick Donald's. If you're not familiar with, if you haven't seen the Wick Donald's commercials and the sauce they're pimping out, I right tried now, the sauce. Is, it sucks. It's bad. Don't like by it. the way, is they've really tempted me. I see there, there's three. There's always five commercials in between uh, when I'm watching these these shows, and it's always like three three Wick Donald's. Um, one I'm having trouble remembering, and then that unicorn thing you just keep, kept mentioning. And that's that's the five commercials. Unicorn I get. Overlord, baby. Commercial. Yeah, yeah, the Unicorn Overlord. So I'm like, oh constant reminder it's also on switch i should say so i got it on playstation because it's not currently on pc my, my goal is i yeah. wanted to play it somewhere kind of portable now i can do that with the portal but uh it's uh not on pc yet they they mm -hmm. vanillaware has i did a little digging on this because some people were poking me about it and apparently the developer <laughs> vanillaware who people love are hesitant to bring things to pc because they don't like the modding hacking scene and yes, they they worry concerned. about that so if you if you're pro modding Bad news. If you're anti-modding, I guess good news. I don't know. They're... <laughs> Who's anti? Well, I guess the developers who want the control, right? I guess or they want probably full not control. even the developers. Probably the distributors yeah. are probably more concerned about it. But the there's developers. plenty of games out there that you cool. you can't mod that are still on PC. It feels like a weird excuse. You could make it so that people don't mod your game. You know, oh, there's they... plenty. There's anti cheats, and so if you do mod something, I mean, it, it, it is like anything else. Once the genie's out of the bottle, it doesn't matter. It's gonna, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's good though. It's, it's real good. That portal's good. And what I'm saying is, this is my definitive review. Ready, everybody? The PlayStation yeah, Portal, one hundred percent delivers on what it says it does. I do not want to overstate it because there's a ton of things it doesn't do that other devices do. Like it doesn't do what my Steam Deck does, which is let me install games locally, uh, you mm -hmm. know, emulate a bunch of crap, do all these other things. It doesn't have any of that. That's not what this is. 
this thing is one job and its job is to Price do is- remote play without any lag and it does it and it's great price around 300 what was it again I 299 yet generally i got it for about 100 yeah. off that for the deal i got so yeah. yeah yeah that's that's about the only that's what i've been waiting for a deal why didn't you tell me you found a deal well it was a deal with an individual it wasn't like a store or oh something like that. okay yeah. yeah 300 is just that's just the mm, it's like no that's just a little too close to getting the low end steam deck for me you need to make that about 200 it needs to Fit somewhere like two hundred is where I'm willing to spend, mm-hmm. and when it drops to that price, I'll probably pick one up. I think you're paying a lot for um the, the it's got all the dual sense stuff built into it, just like yeah. your controller does. Yeah. So I think you're paying yeah. a lot more for that. Absolutely. The yeah, screen's the very nice though. I, I was worried about it because I have the <clears throat> the OLED Steam Deck, and I really like that screen. And I was yeah. like, well, is this going to be a real step down because it is LED and or not LED LED. Yeah, is it is it OLED? LED. Yeah, it's just it's LED. It's not OLED. This is LED. Okay. The portal and um yeah, I fired it up and it's fine. super bright and brilliant and looks fine. Do you no need problem. Anything better than that inside <clears throat> walking around? You're sitting on the shitter. I mean, well, do you really need anything? You better don't than really just... need it, but I will say that once you mm-hmm. use the OLED Steam Deck, it's a little hard to go back to other displays. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really nice. But and I would it'd be great if the portal had an OLED screen, but it doesn't, and it's it's still a very nice. Uh, LED screen. Um, yeah. Looks awesome. But I, I'm not willing to spend the extra money for it, though. No. That's the problem. No, me neither. Like, that's the thing. I'm already paying. You're paying a premium because, A, it's a Sony thing and you just pay a premium. But yeah. also, you know, you're paying for that that dual sense controller stuff. And it's just mm-hmm. like the controllers in, in, in its fidelity. You can feel your footsteps. You can, you know, feel yeah. resistance on the triggers when you're pulling bows back, stuff like that. It's all It's all built into it. The only thing that's weird about it is it doesn't have... You know the touchpad button in the middle of your PlayStation yeah. 4 and 5 controllers? Yeah, well, they don't have that. You have to tap the screen to do that. It's a little weird because there's no button hmm. for that. Um, hmm. So there's a few things you have to kind of get around. But for the most part, it's kind of one for one. And I don't know. I was real not skeptical. Well, I guess I was skeptical. I was skeptical before I got it because I just didn't. Uh, I Like you, I have been less than impressed with even local streaming solutions, let alone cloud stuff. Yeah. It's just not yeah. quite where I want it. This is the best I've seen. It's really good. And it's just running on my stupid Wi-Fi network. Like, we're not even doing anything fancy here. Not even plugged in. Yeah, nice. So it's 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 real good. I like it. Uh, okay. Brian, what'd you get up uh, to this week? Doing anything fun? Uh, yeah, I did a couple of fun things. But mostly I've been doing, I've been watching and, and being very uh, interested in the future of a couple of little technologies that have been, I've kind of been watching. Uh, one of them was, was mentioned in our, our uh, e- uh, Ewan 2 on the discord server yeah uh that's on our frog pants play retro channel right uh mentioned the insignia 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 this the xbox live thing they've been working on it's a third party thing they've been working on to try to get these xboxes that used to connect to live Mm -hmm. um so remember xbox live right 2002 2010 it was around for a while it was pretty big deal um so (laughs) they're bringing back the connectivity online connectivity for Halo 2 for your Xbox. Mm. And that's happening today on the 15th, March the 15th. They're bringing those servers online so you can connect your old, your old Xboxes and play some Halo 2 online with some folks. Yep. Exciting. Yeah. There's other ways to do that too. But this is the most purest way to do it, right? Well, it's, I mean, the pure way promised. is probably played to... I mean, you can play 2 on the Master Chief Collection online right yeah. now on Game Pass and not even pay for it. Like... Bah. That's probably the purest way if you're talking about purity. No, this you, one's, you plug this up is, your Xbox, man. You plug up your network and you just yeah. you, you got your real Xbox, baby. I get it. But uh, but I mean in this middle bit, the part that's emulating right. live, I mean that's just that's just emulation. They're not like running the thing, are they? they? Got servers. Yeah, they but are, but they're not like the they're not I've, the they're not the Microsoft Xbox servers. Oh well, no, they're not going to be Microsoft servers. No, those are gone. Those are long gone. Two thousand two, no. two thousand ten. Microsoft said goodbye. Eight years is long enough. Yeah, they got to fake Suck it. Suck it up, Buttercup. They got to fake it. Here are the options or the modes you can play: Rumble Pit, Double Team, Team Slayer, Team Skirmish, Team Training, Team Snipers, Team Hardcore, Team SWAT, and Big Team Battle. And of course, the H two Challenge. These are all uh, yes. you'll if you played a lot of Halo two. These all make sense. So yeah. And you might, you're going to want to get in there as soon as possible because, you know, people got very excited about it. They've been promising this for about, a, they've been promising it for a while, but they really started ramping up about a year ago. And so now all this stuff is coming online. They're adding more things. It's pretty exciting right now. I better get on while people are still playing it. Anyway, 
as well as we know that uh, that Yuzu Switch emulation, you heard about that, right? That oh, little yeah. kerfuffle where the you know that they had to pay they had to pay like two million dollars plus to the settlement for to to Nintendo. Well, the two point four anyway. the two point four million was the settlement because they yeah. Nintendo was going to sue them out of existence, and they said, "All yeah. right, and fine, we'll did. pay it." We'll pay it here. Have the money. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, they're kinda, gone. They kind of did, but they were going to sue them to the point they had to go to jail, right? That yeah, the, the settlement includes they had to shut everything down. They're going to be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we're like, oh no! It's like, oh, they, they took it down. And I was like, hey, everybody, settle down. Shut up. It's it's this, this code's already out there. It's it's open source. Guess mm-hmm. what? It's back, baby. Well, it's mostly back. They're working on making it back, baby. Not the same people, but some other people being a little more careful, a little more lawyerly, lawyerly. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they're just not, um, they're not making a for, for profit thing. The problem is that the Yuzu guys were making upwards of $33,000 a month on their Patreon. Alone. Right, right. That's a for right. profit endeavor. That is not game preservation. I don't, I think Nintendo had a case. There are plenty of other emulation projects Obviously. that happen that Nintendo doesn't touch. They don't go near them. Yeah. Why? Because they've skirted the legalities. These guys were stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. What did they think stupid Nintendo like would a do? Fox. Well, the minute you um, start bringing in thirty grand in money per month, right? And and you saw a spike in it when Breath right. of the Wild, not Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom came out. Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. What do you think Nintendo's yeah. gonna do? Sit there yeah. and go. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> of course not. But it's, <laughs> but it's on its way back. The the this the code is out there. The genie's uh, you know out of the bottle. It, it, we knew it had to come back as something, and it has. It's come back as something called Sue You. Ah, clever. <laughs> Sue You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, keep your eyes open for that project to uh, to find its way back. And you know, there'll probably be more hoops to jump through like there was with the Yuzu. You had to do all kinds of crazy crap like you had to either 3D print a little, a little clip so that you could put it in the Switch so you could get it to boot into a mode so you could get codes and you could feed that into a code generator thingy and it was a lot of steps anyway i've tried doing it before and it was a big pain in the ass and i'm like <laughs> i thought the bigger was, one was ryu jinx anyway aren't they bigger they they were bigger than right. yuzu i think and they, yeah they so they haven't gone after yeah. them so you even have other alternatives out there that aren't sue you or yuzu or any of those there's others working yeah. on stuff but they, they you know nature will find a way and uh so if you were disappointed for a minute that you wouldn't be able to play your switch emulation in your steam deck It'll be back. Yeah. You watch. It's you watch. coming back. Just wait baby. and see. Sue you, baby. Yeah. I love that they call it that. S U Y U. It's spelled just like Yuzu, but they swapped out the S for or the Y for with yeah. an S. Yes. Uh all right. Let's get to our main topic today. Let's have some tribute for a great game and a great creator and talk about this. Shall we play a game? Indeed, we're going to play a game many of you have heard of from the 1990s on the Super Nintendo called a Chrono Trigger. Um, <gasps> this is considered by many people I know personally and otherwise uh, the greatest JRPG of all time. Yeah. Maybe even one of the best games ever made. I've heard people say that too. Sure. I'm like, ho ho, settle down, fella. Yeah. I, let me check it out. And I've been told for probably close to more than probably at least a decade, people are constantly telling me, oh, you got to play Chrono Trigger. And I'm like, I played Chrono Trigger for five minutes. Looks like every other freaking JRPG game I played. Mm. I never gave it a chance. Yep. That's my bad. I'm here to report. I enjoyed myself this oh, week. Yeah. And I, Chrono Trigger it's deserves good. it. I prefer it over all. I like Final Fantasy VI quite a bit, but I uh, or three yeah. here in Japan it was six. And now it's six. But anyway, I prefer this over all of them. I'd rather play this. Yeah. Uh, this is a That's good game. That's because it takes away a lot of the BS that me and Scott don't like, like uh, those random encounters we don't like. Uh, you, you, There's very few things that are forced upon you uh, as far as battles go. There are a few. Where you know, as whereas you know, it's progressive. You got you got to get through the story. So some things you have to do. Yeah, some but, of the uh, plot. For the most can, part, you can decide. Yeah, some of the plot won't move forward until you move it forward by fighting because yeah. you have to, or or whatever. And you need to level up. And you don't want to grind a lot. So uh, it helps that the actual combat is also really fun. It's good. It's really well done yes. turn based combat. Now, what I want out of and there's rumors to this effect. None of it's been confirmed. But what I want is for Square to now that they've done their you know, this thing they've done with Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth. Mm-hmm. Um, those are amazing. Incredibly well yes. done. Do that with this, man. Get this people out. People kind of forgotten about, I mean, besides the people who already love it, people kind of forgotten about Chrono Trigger. 
Is it kind of? I don't think gamers have. I think that there's, I think they've felt because it's gone language for so long. If you don't count Chrono Cross, which was technically a follow up for the PlayStation. Right. um, right. It's not the same game though. And a lot of people are disappointed with it for the direction it took. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you, if you, what I think happened is Square has just let it languish for so long and said nothing. Right. That I think people are like, well, it's never going to happen, so I'm just not going to think about it. I don't think people have forgotten. I think they've just <laughs> given up on their, their chances, yeah. and that may change yeah. soon. So that would be awesome yeah. if it did. I would. Man, play would the, it be great if, uh, if it got the uh, play retro effect, where like the like, in, like two weeks from now, we oh, it'd be all yeah, be it'd be us. Whoa, oh, yeah, they get out in front of everybody and go. <laughs> we have very important announcement to make here at SquareSoft. After the recent episode of Play Retro, we have decided. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at first we were working on NFTs and crypto shit, but now, <laughs> now it's this Chrono Trigger no, Reba- this. remake, rebake, maybe call it rebake. Rebake? Oh, I like a rebake. Yeah. yeah. Or or uh, Back to the Future. How about that? Yeah, I like Chrono that. Trigger, Back to the Future. Here's some uh, here's some audio from this game. I should say one of the things about it that's uh, renowned is the soundtrack is considered one of the great soundtracks of game history. Yeah. Um, Almost, I mean, a lot of that stuff almost gonna, yeah. killed the composer. Did you did you know about this story? No, this tell is, me this story. What is it about? Right. There's there's a, oh my god, there's so much trivia about this game, but this one I found interesting. The music composition uh was uh created by uh, apologies for murdering here, but uh Yasun Ori Mitsuda. I think he, you got uh, it. He, you got it. He th- he threatened to leave according to Game Facts on GameSpot. By the way, I love I love Game Facts on GameSpot. According to them, he, he threatened to leave Square due to low pay if he could not compose the music. Uh, and then, it, it, so that's when they said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, we'll give you a chrono trigger. Um, and, uh, oh, and so he's like, okay, he slept in the studio, Mitsuda, slept in the studio for several nights trying to finish the soundtrack. A computer hard drive crash caused some of the music data to be lost. No! Oh, boy. Guess what? He developed stomach ulcers from being overworked and had to be hospitalized and then he had to have another composer step in and help finish the music nearly killed the guy nearly killed him but it sounds amazing oh yeah it's an amazing yeah it's amazing soundtrack um so i guess yay overworked bad policies (laughs) i don't know um (laughs) look they we just like in america that we didn't invent overworking for game developers oh no crunch time crunch time in japan is a national uh, yeah, they've been underpaying and overworking people, having them sleep, and it sounds like so much fun. As as a as a gamer, you're like, oh, doesn't that sound like fun? Working on a game, so, being so impassioned with it that you sleep overnight. That's Dude, a horrible idea. If I'd have been 18, 19, 20, <laughs> sure, I do not right. want that now. I could tell you that. Like, I'm really yeah. glad. I'm really glad Crunch Culture is not only getting sunlight, but also getting. You know, there's changes happening in the industry, I think, yes. overall, and that's good. There's still some pretty big, broad examples of it not going away yet. Like this mm-hmm. Final Crunch GTA 6 is currently going under. There's a lot of talk about oh. how that's kind of a mess. Um, so you still see it. But back in the day and in Japan in general, they don't yeah. they don't think of it like we do. They're like, no. yeah, stay as late as you can. And, oh, if you screw it up, uh, here is sword separate you know, like you, there are there are some cultural uh, there's some cultural stuff going on there, according to yeah. my Japanese friend Ken. Uh, he says it's just very different, and we would not recognize it if we went and worked there for a game studio. It's just a different animal, yes. different, different different world animal completely. Yep, yep, yep. Um, that sounded like I said what? I even have a Japanese friend. That just didn't sound right. Anyway, right. Uh, moving on. I have one of my best friends is a Japanese. Is <laughs> a Japanese. Uh, Chrono Trigger ninety five is when this came out. And uh, it was published yeah. and developed by Square. I don't know that were they Square Enix yet. I think they hadn't merged yet. Maybe I don't think they were Enix. I think they were it had Square Software, but that was a Japanese commercial. I'm not sure exactly what their title was there, but Enix was not in the title at that. Enix point was though. still I'm doing. Sure. They were still their own company, I believe. Right, right, right. Making their own games. Well, because Enix did yeah. drag. They were the Dragon. Quest. Enix. Hold Enix, on. get in here. Not Enix. Square oh, oh, Enix. Oh, Enix. Oh, Square Enix would be an amazing name. <laughs> Enix games. Let me just look this up real quick because I swear they were there for. Uh, let's see, list of Enix games. Here we go. Um, they did Org Battle. I knew about that. Or Ogre Battle, not Org. Uh, oh, yeah, Dragon Quest series. That was their thing. So even though people go, oh, Dragon Quest, that's another Square thing. Well, not really. They inherited yeah. that when they bought Enix or when they merged. Uh, now they're Square Enix. Anyway, 
Uh, and what year did no, that happen? It was near enough in flex time anyway, because Yuji Hori, who was the creator of Enix's Dragon Quest, which was this talking about, he was, <laughs> all, that's how this game got his start. There was, uh, what, a couple of years prior to this, um, uh, the, a couple of the Japanese developers, they were kind of friends as well, but uh, uh, Akira uh, Toriyama and Square Enix's uh, Yuji Hori and uh, and Square's, I don't ever have to say this, the guy's name, but Hiro, Hiro Nobu uh, Sakaguchi. I think Close you're getting them fine. Me. You're doing fine. I'm, get, I'm doing all right. But yeah, you're you're Final real Fantasy you're real series. the John Blackthorn in uh, uh, Shogun. Get, you're killing it. I'm getting I'm getting better at it, but I'm still it's horrible. It sounds terrible, but I'm I'm working on it. I'm working. That's the important thing. I care and I'm working on it. That's to right. Be better. But yeah, those guys all were coming to the U.S. Look at some, you know, see how graphic stuff was working out here. And so they on their trip, they all got together, and I thought they were talking about you know. RPGs and some of the things that they would love to see. And one of the things they discussed was, you know, maybe something with a time mechanic. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get the whole Chrono Trigger came into play here, uh, where it's just, you know, it is a JRPG with time mechanics. And it's it's a lot of fun because you don't have to be just, you don't have to be locked into just, uh, you know, the time period. Most of them, you know, it all existed at one time. It's either like, you know, feudal Japan or, you know, it's all sci-fi. But in Chrono Trigger, you get to travel around. You get to you get to explore all these these great ideas of you know the sci-fi future, you know feudal past, you know modern times. You get to explore, and it's, it it takes it in really fun directions that I didn't know I was going to enjoy. And it's such a tight package. Everything about this game is, it's like, this is the the peak of of this era. Yeah, yeah very right? good. The the pacing. We talked about pacing in pre-show yes. and how much I like good pacing. This game has amazing pacing and. Uh, a lot of games, a lot of its contemporaries were not great at pacing, which is why this one no. stood out. Now, I say all that and will now admit that I've never beat it. I've never finished this game, and I've started it, I don't know, five times. And I've, it's not I've, a really long game either. I got a, I got a pretty good ways this week. Uh, I was kind of surprised how far I got. Yeah, these, uh, really these old them. SNES games, we used to think they were huge, but they're, you know, in relative, yeah. relatively it, speaking, they're not that big. It all had to fit on a cart. So the originally they were developing this game uh, for a CD format because mm -hmm. we were still in a time that the the SNES was planned to get the CD. Yeah. Um, and it was a little add on that we're going to do. And then they said, nope, forget it. <laughs> so they had to pivot. The dream, the dream team making the dream game had to pivot and create something that would fit in a cart, which was actually a good thing because it did keep it. It kept it tight. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, going all out with, you know, multimedia and music, which would have sounded better probably, but not a whole lot better. Yeah, that's um, true. And probably giving you a lot more options and things, but that's fine. I think what we have here is just about perfect. I agree. I'll give you a little timeline here for my thing I was talking about earlier. Square and Enix joined forces. I thought it was much earlier, but it was April Fool's Day, 2003. Ah. 2003! Huh. That feels like that April Fools. long ago. I guess We're it was getting together. 21 years ago, but still doesn't feel yeah, like it. Yeah, it's just 21. It's just a short 21 years ago. In the chrono years, that's pretty short. It's not I bad. Mean, we were jumping you know, centuries, mm -hmm. so not bad. Not bad at all. Not anyway, all. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, like I say, my favorite Square game. Up until a point, like modern Square games, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is controversial or not, but I think Nier Automata is my favorite. Oh, interesting. Have you played the Nier oh, games? Yeah. The Niers are amazing. Nier games. You not played those? I, I, I remember being very excited, and I remember I remember starting to play, and I don't remember why I stopped. So I don't remember very much about it because I, I I do remember installing it, playing a little bit into it, and something stopped me, but I can't remember what it was. I never played Rec or uh, Replicant was the first one. Anyway, Replicant? Japan only. You couldn't get it here. Now there's a new version mm. of it here that's been remastered for. You know, whatever it's a prequel, but uh, for me, it's near Automata is my favorite 2017 game. So it doesn't even, it's not even that old. It's fantastic. Mm. The original game was called just near that was in 2010. That was remade into near replicant. Um, from what I've heard, there are some problems with it. <laughs> like and near the, that's the N E I R, right? Is that N I E R? N I E R. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. They're really good. Liar. Robots and cool stuff and big wastelands. Shit I like. Things I'm into. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to go back and see what oh I think was this the time when I was like I was doing this and playing the, the latest Devil May Cry and let me see. I'm trying to see some screenshots of what, what twenty seventeen oh, was a big so deal, sexy. man. A lot of people yeah, didn't like it. A lot of people didn't like it because I thought it was too sparse, but that's part of what I liked about it. I liked that yeah. apocalyptic kind of everything's wrecked 
vibe. Wrecked. And all that's left are a few animals, giant, you know, stupid robots that don't know why they're there. And then you're these androids that have to figure out your place and why you are who you are and it's amazing mm-hmm. boss battles. I mean, some really cool <gasps> stuff in that game. Oh, man. We could not have picked a better time to do a Square Enix or a Square game because right now on Steam, they're doing the Square Enix publisher sale. And if you are interested in, in Nair Automata, uh, it is uh, only fifteen ninety nine, sixty 60% near, near. Did you call near. it Nair? I like Nair. No, I like it. Nair, Nair, Nair. Oh, yeah, look Pants at that. Fire. This, is, uh, this is the, oh, it's Nair. part of the spring sales. There's a yeah. sale for tons of stuff, but yeah, I didn't realize they were tons doing their own thing in there. That's cool. Yeah, I got, got some Final Fantasy. Uh, look at that. Was that a, a seven? Look at that. Yeah, look at all this stuff on sale. Ooh, core. Look at that. Life is Strange. Yeah, I forgot about that. Now, Life is Strange. That feels very much like uh, Chrono Trigger, right? Mm, Do a little bit of no. little bit of traveling there. A little, not, no, no, it's <laughs> mostly... You know that That thing's like a point-and-click adventure. It's not really... It's very Western, too. I wouldn't it's say... Not, it's, yeah, it's very Westernized. But you can get... Uh, look at this. Chrono Trigger is on sale for seven fifty, as well as Legend of Mana, which we did not that long ago, fourteen ninety nine. So yeah. we've got some good deals going on right Bunch now. Bunch of Dragon sale. Ball games on sale today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chrono Cross. I don't have that one yet. Picking super, it up, nine ninety nine. Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Never heard of it. Five bucks right now. Usually fifty nine. dollars uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. You we don't get any money for shilling this, by the way. We no. just love it. No, we just like it. We like sales. Sales are yeah. cool. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find some more stuff that's interesting. The Xenoverse Ooh, like game's way sale. cheap. Yeah, it looks like there's mm-hmm. there's some stuff. You can go out there and save some cash. Yeah. Part of the Steam cash. Spring Sale. You can, you can save money by spending money. Do it. Do it. Yeah, spend money. <laughs> we promise you've saved money if you spend it. Okay? Right. That's how we know. But... In Chrono Trigger, I really felt like some things I didn't realize. So it starts out, I had said I'd played the game before, yeah. and I had, like, the first little bit. And it's always the same deal, right? I played it on the SNES. I played the SNES version, which just starts up like any other JRPG, and you, you uh, your character's waking up. It's like, it's like, Chrono, wake up, wake up! And your mom's there, and she's like, get up, and you're, like, in bed, and you get up, and you... you they all start this room. way. This is such a yeah, trope. they all start like this. You yeah. explore your little room there. Maybe you got some safe spot or something. Who knows? And then you you walk downstairs. Your mom gives you a little thing. Oh, you're very excited about the big event, the big festival today, aren't you? And of course, this is total JRPG stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, cool. And then you go outside and you try to find your friend. And that's where it always starts. And this game follows that perfectly. You start an affair and you go up there and you're looking for your friend and uh, they're setting up a project. In the meantime, you get to walk around and learn a couple of things, maybe do some training for fighting. And then you end up going up to the where your friend is at and they've made a fly. So you've seen the movie The Fly where Jeff Goldblum gets uh, teleported from one pad to another, but then a fly gets involved and he turns into a monster. Well, same thing here, except... Instead of uh, a fly, there's a pendant, and yep. uh, another person you ran into has the pendant. Oh, rips a rips a hole in the space time continuum, and hello, yep. everything changes from there. It's suddenly not like every other JRPG game I played, and uh, I dug it. Yeah. Once I got past that, what first thirty minutes or something? I yeah, think, the so. first thirty is very tropey. Once you get past that, yeah. things really open up, and it's very good after that. Um, and whatever, like I said, every JRPG I've ever played. Marl. Features a young, un- misunderstood, grumpy kid who just doesn't really have... He's not a hero. Can he be one, though? Well, let's find out. He's going to he, be thrust into a story where his hero ship will have to shine. You know, it's always the same. That's right. It's Chrono. He's the silent protagonist. That was an argument, too, because some of the development team wanted him to be a, a, a talky-talky, and uh, some others were like, no, you never want your protagonist, the person that the, you're putting your players embodiment into you don't want to name them mm. and i don't care one way or the other but that was a debate well you can uh, change you his name up, but he he does you know he he doesn't yeah, he starts as chrono he just but talks he doesn't and, say anything it's important he doesn't say anything he doesn't right. go he doesn't have a personality of his own do you know what i named him for my playthrough this week what'd you name him t-y-r-d that's short for turd yeah. <laughs> Of course you did. I do that all the time. So, Tyrd never yeah. gets blocked from anything. If I put turd, sometimes they do. Old games don't care, but right. newer games are what? like, oh, you can't say that word. Why can't you name your character turd? That's, re- that's ridiculous. Oh, there's tons he of games to- that do that. They won't let you. They're like, oh, we've yeah. deemed your word not appropriate. Please choose another. That yeah. happens all the time. I hate oh that. my gosh! But yeah, I I left mine as. 
chrono and then i left all the other so we run across the princess who you run into at the fair um her name is marl i say marl maybe it's marley but it's about you know it looks like marl to me mm. and uh then your friend who's an inventor that's luca uh and you can name any of these people and i definitely did not change frog's name because no, his, his name is frog yeah, his name is Frog. You, you, it's the default. He's a knight with water magic. His yeah. name is Frog. You yeah. Frog. He's a little frog. I mean, look at him right here in this video, Chad. Look at him with his sword. Look at that frog. He's my favorite, by the way, out of all the character <laughs> designs that was uh, that was taken from uh, taken from. Uh, oh, I still can't believe he died. It's just, it, this sucks so much. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it does. Sorry, suck. Yama. It does. Sorry, Yama. He 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 made he, he didn't do he didn't do all of the. Um, sprite work but he did do the original illustrations that everybody was uh, you know everyone's based on by yeah. mm -hmm. and that was one of that was his character was the frog and uh and man i really loved i love frog a, a knight with water magic he's kind of got the best attitude no frog's I mean, an amazing character are you kidding me i used to think robo yeah. was the bomb i kind of like robot but i prefer yeah, robots are good i prefer frog frog's the one yeah yeah, I don't care nothing about no Ale or whatever is whatever their name is, that prehistoric chief with brute strength, whatever. Ayla, I think is her name. Or his Ayla, name. is how you say it. And then what about Magnus? Ayla. Ma or Ma Magus? Magus? The bad the bad butthole of the whole story. <laughs> Magus. I kinda like Magus. I'm I'm into the dark broody I type. I, I like yeah. It is, he's a good bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. There have been a yeah. lot of games since who are inspired by this game. Um most recently, Sea of Stars is very much a homage tribute uh or whatever you want to call it to this game and if you right. haven't played that it was up for a ton of awards last year for a reason it's a fantastic game it's new but it's a throwback and it's a throwback to almost everything that made this game great including non-forced random encounters where you don't see who's coming they don't do any of that they do just like this mm -hmm. and it's great play sea of stars also an amazing soundtrack and i think they had someone help with the music it may not have been the main guy Anyway, yeah, somebody um, who helped with music on Chrono Trigger also helped on Sea of Stars. Can't yeah, they, was. Uh, they, they, there was a Games Radar article that I read um, where the Chrono Trigger guys were all like, oh, Sea of Stars is so good. It looks so good. It's going to be so great. And so, yeah, they, there's some connective tissue there. So if you're looking for a game to play that might give you some Chrono Trigger vibes, there you go. Oh, there Chrono it is. Jan's, uh, Jan's Sonori Masuda, the same dude, yeah. uh, did the yeah. music for Sea of Stars. Highly, highly recommend that big thumbs up game. Sea of Stars is rad. Sea of Stars is as if, as if you made a game like this in the 90s, but you had way better computers <laughs> and way more, <laughs> you know, you could do whatever you wanted. That's what that game is. Right. It's really good. I, I, I watched some really good documentaries on this. There's there's so much information about Chrono Trigger on the on YouTube, on the Internet, and it gets deep. That was one of the problems I had. I couldn't find like a high level discussion about chrono trigger because everybody that was talking about it was getting really deep into the weeds and it's like let's talk about the lore and i'm like oh, it's a 12-hour game settle down now and yeah. it's like let's talk about each you know how everything you know let's talk about all the different cultural references that were piled in here and where they stole them from and how, where they came from and all that's like oh, that's one high level look and yeah. um but there's a lot of great stuff out there for that and a lot of great interviews just, no, just the, the fan, you will never be short of fandom for Chrono Trigger no. ever. No. People freaking love this game. That's why I think it makes perfect sense to make a uh, a remake or something. Even yeah. if they just remaster it, pixel like the pixel remasters for uh, the Final Fantasy series, those are really well thought of and mm -hmm. retain the sprites and the kind of sensibilities of the original. They add things like auto battling and a few other things to make it simpler. But for the I most part, those are... I do too. Those are really highly regarded. <laughs> so why not give either Chrono Trigger that treatment or give it the full like yeah. FF7 remake stuff? I would play it either way. I'd be all into so it. So easy to do the auto battle. I played a lot of this. I, I fired up on the uh, my SNES Mini, mm. by the way. I, I dumped it over there. It's not only by default, which I was terribly disappointed to see whenever I I was like, oh, I bet Chrono Trigger's on my Oh, on right. My SNES That's not Mini. on there. You're right. It's not. And I was like, no, it's not on here. So I, I side-loaded it. Um, and, uh, I played a little bit there. I do like that. It's, it's kind of, it's a little more straightforward 
Mm-hmm. Um, and but I ended up mostly playing it because it was convenient to play it on my um, Steam Deck in yeah. the bed. Yeah. And man, the auto battling stuff is so great. Just hit that. I just hit that uh, on my in my case. I think it's the Y button. It's the top button mm-hmm. on the face buttons. And I I just hit that thing and I do the auto battle. If it's a serious battle, then I have to get hands on. You know, I have to get in there and do my little my little combos and matchups and everything. And um, but for the most part, the auto battling. I mean, just do that. If, if you gotta, if you're getting if you're getting low on health and your character has potions, they'll heal themselves up. And it was a that was a really good experience. And that was on Steam Deck. Purchased it on Steam, which is a derivative of the uh, of the PlayStation DS version. Right. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that. I played oh, it way. Later. I know what I, I was thinking. Late. By the way, I knew what I was thinking on the SNES Mini. What was on there? It was Secret of Mana is on there, and I always think yes. that that I, my brain always Dang. goes to Chrono Trigger for some reason. Same. I thought the same thing. I said, oh, yes, on there. And I was like, no, it was Secret of Mana. And that's how I played that. Which that also episode. rocks, by the way. Yeah. We talked about it. Yes, it does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Deserved all the praise we gave it. That one's also getting some remake love and some new game love coming up soon. Yes. Um, anyway, the, what's the your one. Favorite, no, go ahead. What's your favorite era when you were playing Chrono Trigger? I got to say, I really kind of like the past stuff. I thought I was going to really like the future stuff, but it no. was kind of a bummer the, the only the, good were... one is snes the only good one is the super nintendo game and i stand by that the ps1 right. remake of the game or the port of it okay it's terrible right it's not good i was talking about i was talking about time eras in in the game itself oh like in the in, game there's game. prehistoric there's prehistoric there's you know there's there's kind of like castle age right. prehistoric there's future i thought i was gonna like the future stuff when i got to the future everybody was a big old fat bummer everybody's everybody just, everybody's like a, a bummer future. but i do like those sequences i'm probably partial to the future yeah. stuff Okay. You know. Yeah. I thought you might be. And also so anytime frog and then and when frogs with me. Yeah, frogs, yeah. As <laughs> soon as I got frog, I, I was care. like, yeah, things had just gotten better. <laughs> yeah, you're on this team for everybody. Never leaving. Yeah. Never die. Never never never, never, die. never not be here. Uh but Chrono Trigger, speaking of which, for the PlayStation, here's my biggest problem with any of the ports that happen for most of the square stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, new games, great. Final Fantasy Seven, amazing on PlayStation. And like you know, that was clearly a big jump forward for a lot of PlayStation stuff, 7, 8, and 9, all did real well there. Uh, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, and there's a third one I can't think of that all got ported. Mm. They're bad. They're just bad ports. That PS1 yeah. port is freaking bad. This, the load times are bad and long. They changed some interface stuff that just looks ugly. They thought they were modernizing it. That just was a step backwards. Uh, the DS version of the game is very good. Oh, someone in the chat mm-hmm. just brought that up. Yeah, the DS remake is very good. Probably the one you should try to find if you are looking for like the cart. I think that's the one if you're talking about a handheld. Um, mm-hmm. But these days, if someone asked me which one should I play, I'd just say emulate the SNES one. That's what I would do. I would say emulate the SNES one was great because all the ports, like you said. So the load times was the biggest hit that this game take, takes because the developers... Luckily, we're able to skirt that load time because they were originally making this for the SNES. And so they were able to do something they wanted to do, which was to make these really smooth transitions uh, between fights, you know, or to any time you enter into a city or anything like that. So those are very smooth on anything like PlayStation, anything going forward, because everything was based on that port going forward, um, has those load times, including... Uh, a little bit's there in the Steam version. It's a little faster. The PlayStation, definitely. So if you're going to emulate that one, that one's definitely going to have the load times. Even when you're emulating, you can do the double speed on the CD. Also, isn't and the still, Steam the Steam version is just low. the PS1 one ported, isn't it? I think. I think it's actually, I think it's supposed to, I, I saw some differing opinions on what it was supposed to be, hmm. but I'm assuming it's the PlayStation one. But some people are saying it's similar to the DS version. I'm like, I think this looks more like the PlayStation version I looked at because you can actually play that online. There's like, uh, if you go online, there's emulators that will emulate PlayStation 1 as well as the mm. SNES. You can play that right there on archive.org. If you yeah, want to. those are available. The PlayStation 1 yeah. just was so, I don't know, man, whatever. It was a new console, new tech. Load, load times were now going to be worse than they'd ever been because now we're into optical. You can, you know, I finally look back on some, or I used to make so much fun of Nintendo and say, yeah, you guys with your N sixty four, you were just so convinced that everybody was going to stick with cartridges and the CD thing was going to be a weird fad, and you weren't going to buy mm-hmm. that. In the end, I think they're kind of right. Like 
Yeah. PlayStation 1 load times were terrible. So were Saturn. Yes. So were anything optical. <laughs> oh, God, Saturn. And even yeah. up till recent, they've been bad. Yeah. Like N64 cards, bam, smack, boom, bam, you're in, you're over, you're done. Mm-hmm. You move on to the next thing. It's not waiting around for stuff. Did you lose a little fidelity on music? Sure. Did you, did yeah. you miss out on some possible uh, size limitations? Maybe. But I don't know. I kind of... I kind of owe them apologies for the N64 decision because I thought they were dumb at the time. And I'm not so sure. I, I think it was mm, I the the reasoning for why they weren't doing it was lame. The uh, the the actuality and the reality of it ended up being pretty good. We just because when we try to emulate these things, some of these some of this code sometimes you would have to hard code so that you would have delays, and so in order to emulate something. Uh, now you still have to have load times, even though you don't have optical drives. Mm-hmm. And so, and is but that code is written in such a way that you'd have to basically rewrite the code to make yep. it work without that load time. So hey, kind of stuck in. Um, but I, what I did love though, I do really love the animated cutscenes, the whole little yeah. movie beforehand. Man, that is that is so much I mean, fun. Especially and, then, oh it was gosh. like, whoa, we're getting like all this. We're basically getting an animated series with this thing. Yeah, but is the this load Dragon times. Ball Z? What the, am I watching right now? The load times between them were atrocious, though. So bad. Yeah. Like yeah, so I, I kind of would be pissed. I'd be like, okay, that was cool, but you're gonna wait a minute and a half now to get back to the game. Like, ugh. Yeah, I hated that. And they really didn't make like the PlayStation version. You really didn't. You know, we got get your animated cutscenes, which was cool. Uh, loading times bad. Sound quality it's about the same, which is disappointing because I mean, really, CD uh, quality music could could really just outshine the SNES if it if you really wanted to. But the music was already so great. How could you really improve upon well, it? Well, plus I don't they know. plus they you know it's a huge expense, and if they didn't think it was worth it, yeah, I could see them not yeah. doing it. Yeah, and. But you did also get uh, you get the bestiary, which is good because I swear when I'm playing this game, uh, I'm like, oh, what freaking creature was that? Because everything is weird, you know, is is all of that stuff. It's like, what creature is that thing? Is is kind of shaped like uh, but what is that? Is that a frog? I think it's a frog. Maybe not. Mm. It's like, is that a tree stump? Am I fighting a tree stump? So it'd be really good to have a bestiary so you can understand a little better. It has an art gallery. That's good for me and you, but who really cares? And some extra music and stuff, uh, and you can go back and kind of skip around and look at yeah. you know the different anime cuts i mean the art the cool. art gallery is cool because if you were a toriyama fan you get to see you know yeah some concept art and that sort of thing um, yeah which is amazing yeah it's all right uh but like you said it was kind of a straight over port in a lot of ways yeah. and the graphics, slower load times just made me crazy graphics only just a slightly bit better maybe at a higher resolution but not really enough to not really to make you I mean, you're, you you jumped jumped from what S- standard resolution to yeah what F- was that two forty to four eighty? Yeah. It's really yeah, not so much, I mean, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's double, but double back then wasn't a lot. <laughs> like, well, I mean, it was already pixel art, and it was going from pixel art to pixel art, and you know, just, it, there was some and there was some problems there too, because then you have to worry about you know how do you dither this thing and how do you you know, bring these pixels forward. So unless you redo all the sprites, so that eh, is fine. But I will say this, the PlayStation version of Chrono Trigger is part of the Final Fantasy Chronicles. So it was a compilation disc that had Final Fantasy four. Yeah, four Final Fantasy four. I do my Roman numeral calculations. Uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy four and Chrono Trigger on the same CD. And if you were to be forced to play real hardware, you can get this one at probably the most reasonable price. Everything else is going to be $100 plus if you get the SNES version, the Jeez. DS version, but you can find copies of the PlayStation, uh, uh, the uh, Final Fantasy Chronicles. Eh, yeah, so enjoy this. Enjoy your shitty load times. 40. You paid a lot less money for it. So right. Fun. But you have the real hardware. So that's something to say. Something to say for that. Amarillion really in the chat makes a good point. Uh, one of the best examples of load times on this uh, PlayStation 1 was Konami's Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I agree. Oh, yeah. You didn't even notice them because it was, yeah, they kind of made it job. part of the game. That was really good. Yeah. When are we doing that game? Smart. We got to do that at some point. Oh, we got to. We got to. Did we, part, we did one of them. Did we do Symphony of the Night? We didn't do Symphony, we didn't do Symphony of the Night, did we? We did Castle. We might have mentioned it as part of something else, but I don't think we did a. I don't think we've done Castlevania at all yet, have we? 
Or do we do like Castlevania Metroid sort of back and forth on both of those things? The Metroidvania thing. I'm pretty sure we did some very, because we asked what it was doing. It was doing a Metroidvania and yeah, I think we kind of combined it. We probably just skimmed over it. I think Symphony of the Night deserves like a whole episode. A full episode. We know what we're doing now, people. Yeah, we know what we're up to now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we know what the show is uh if you wanted to hang around and play something else uh chrono trigger related you'd have to wait a very long time and then you would get a game called chrono cross and C- chrono cross had a lot of people very excited about it it was a playstation one uh exclusive at the time uh, i can get on pc now i think and uh that game is not what people wanted or thought they were getting so yes. if you were looking for like a direct sequel with these same characters and a continue, you weren't going to get that. You're not even going right. to get Frog. Frog ain't in there, baby. But if you play it on its own merits, Cross is pretty good. I like it. Yeah. John, yeah. John, uh, it's John Jagger who got me to finally play it because he's like, you know what? I know it's controversial, but you should just at least try it. And I did, and I liked it. It's good. I didn't play the whole thing, but I played the it for only- the only Chrono Trigger I didn't play was the DS version, and only because I'm a play retro purist. That means that it has to be at least 20 years old for me to play it. I know it's a stupid rule, but 2008 Nintendo DS, the Chrono Trigger, it had the dual screen utilization, the touch yeah. screens. Sure. Uh, had some new content, um, which I'm interested in. I guess that would probably be the definitive answer what that Steam version is or is not the DS version or if it's the PlayStation. Yeah, but I will say second screen didn't really do much for that game. It wasn't that big yeah. a deal. Oh, 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 we didn't talk about this. But guess what? Guess who's back this week, baby? Who? Ted Woosley. Uh, that, oh. You know, the, the English translator who's always, we've talked about him many times. We uh, love that guy. That did. guy's a weirdo. We love him. I love that guy. And he's so he's one of the most interesting translators. Worth note. How about that? So he did this. He did this uh, with no help from the translation team. Uh, instead, he memorized scenarios and looked at drafts of commercial players' guides to put dialogue in context. And also, they put a 30 day deadline on this thing. Woosley usually had, uh, you know, 75 plus days to get stuff done. So they had to do this in half the time and with no help from the translation team and just guessing. And I'll tell you, Sometimes it felt like that when I was playing. I was like, it would tell me to do something. And I'm like, that don't make no sense. <laughs> and uh, I had to figure it out myself. But Ted Woosley, just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal character. Oh, he, our, was, he, was the, he was the guy back then, man. Right. He was doing all the cool shit. He was doing all the cool uh, stuff. Have you tried this Chrono Trigger, Flames of Eternity fan made thing, Crimson Echoes thing, any of that? I watched a little bit of footage. Mm. Um, it's supposed to be the Crimson Echoes and Flames of Eternity. I think it's supposed to sit between the uh, Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross Correct. in the timeline, yeah. but it's it's a mod uh, for the game. So it's not like it's a ha- it's a yeah, it's like a hack ha- ROM or whatever, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they just put some more content in there. I think they use the same character sprites and that stuff. Just put you in some new stories and some new situations. And uh, I haven't looked at it, but it interests me for sure. Yeah, I kind of want to see that myself. Mm-hmm. I know there's probably video I should go watch, but I haven't done that. Yeah, that's what I basically did. I watched a little bit, and I'm like, this since I hadn't finished Chrono Trigger, it's like, oh, well, I guess this could be Chrono Trigger for all I know. I don't... Well, of all <laughs> the games, all the same. of all the games that we've covered in the 16-bit era, or even nintendo total i think right. this may be one of the biggest if not the biggest yeah. i mean yeah aside from nintendo mainstays like your metroid your marios your your links and your zeldas and your whatnots i think that this is this is right up there like yeah this is notable people have recommended this and they were right i'll go ahead and say it now those who have been recommending for years for me to play chrono trigger you're right you're gonna keep this, going this you gonna finish that you gonna finish that biatch what are you gonna do? i don't know if i get to finish it right away but yes it is on my short list of games that i would like to complete because um it just gets deeper and deeper and i i really like it and i got my steam deck could play it in the bed it's perfect i tell you i finished uh advanced wars one again completely in our and i'm halfway no. through two <laughs> wow no <laughs> i haven't even lo- i haven't went haven't even went back even though i had a ton of fun i don't know if i was particularly compelled to keep playing oh, I, think if I, I was. had i couldn't get enough. i think i think if i have that recently announced amber nick 
clamshell yeah. uh, version they're working on. Yeah. I think I think I would play some more. I think Advance Wars on on something like that would would tickle my fancy. I don't know why. Mm. I like. Mm. Uh, I also played um, <laughs> because I, I talked about it last week, but I also finished the first Fire Emblem, Emblem again on GBA, mm-hmm, mm. and then nice. I started the second one called. Something Are you nothing but games, Scott? Because I swear, Sacred Stones. I'm a game. I play in bed a Sacred lot. Stones. A lot oh, yeah. in bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way I can do Kim's it. Kim's like, Kim's like, could you go to sleep already? Can you go to sleep? I don't want to hear Japanese people scream at me all night. Because <laughs> lately, I've been playing that uh, Relink game, and they are all this. It's one of those. This is true of the Tales games as well. Tales of Arise. The characters right. are. It's a group of characters, and you're real time fighting, and they're constantly yelling the moves they're doing. So while you're oh, in the middle of this fight, fight, guys going Rising Wyvern, Punching Dragon, Chicken Farts, you know, whatever. They're all yelling it <laughs> constantly. Until the end of the fight. It's a little annoying and obnoxious, but I kind of like it in a weird I, way. I must you warn you, there is a little bit of that in Demon Slayer that uh, whenever they have to use their form. But it's more like you would have seen during the 80s. Now you'd have the recurring thing where it's like, um, I have the power. Oh, I have you the know, power. Every, every episode of He-Man. Or what, uh, what Thundercats? Power. Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats. Thunder cats, thunder, that thunder, whole thing. Thundercats, go. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's it's got a bit of that repeat taz in the Whenever chat's like wait the there is a clamshell ambernet coming yes um let's see if we can find the the model yeah um because this i heard about Which this is, is right a, on time for me well i'm sorry i said ambernet but you know what i got it confused it's the me you oh is it me you i thought it was ambernet no all right they maybe have it one too but i i think the one i heard about was going to be uh the me you the, the mini it's called the mini flip there it is uh mini flip. here chat and you can see the oh, they got a patent image yeah yeah, so that Let's is see. pretty uh, dead on. It's also got a couple of sticks, which is cool. But this is my favorite. I think yeah. I, I think I want this. I think the Pow Kitty had one, and I think they stopped selling that. There's been a couple of them. It's the same thing. When you see these come out, unfortunately, you got to grab them and pray to the gods that the hinges don't break because they don't sell these things for long, typically because. Hinges are hard. Hinges are very right. hard. There's a reason why the 3DS evolved into the 2DS single slab yeah. thing. There's a reason why Nintendo... Well, Nintendo does a really good job with the hinges, but even then, that was their biggest repair problem that they had to deal yeah. with. Um, yeah. I never had an SP that didn't close or open the way it was supposed to. It was really durable, but you can't yes. expect that from all these. So I don't know. I, I hope yeah. they get that right. This color scheme on this on the sample images <laughs> looks like uh, somebody ran their truck into a cotton candy factory and <laughs> everything exploded so i'm not sure about that but uh i i i kind of love hate it but that's the illustration so i don't know what the final colors will look like but yeah i'm with you that's this is retro dodo by the way where we're looking at great website for retro news yeah. and uh um i'm pretty excited but like i said if if you have one of these these people uh, spitting out a, a fl- uh, you know, one of these clamshell ones, better get it fast yep. and be prepared that it may break. Be prepared that you're going to have to be ginger with it because they're probably going to sell it for a short time. They're going to cancel it because it's a pain in the ass. Assume it breaks and just be careful. Yeah. Do that. Just be careful. You'll be yeah. happier if you do. All right, let's move on. That's our look at this beloved ch- uh, game. Now let's see if our brains are any good. All right, we're going to play mm-hmm. Guess My Game. And Guess Toast. My Game has an intro, which goes like this. Destroy it. <laughs> and uh, the, what we do here is we play some audio from an old game. We give a couple of hints, and we do uh, we now do this as uh, multiple choice. And we're going to start today with me and a game that came out on the PC in 2001. Oh, I, I watched that movie. Yeah, oh, did you? No. Yeah. Well, I I can't do that, Dave. Or Dave, I'm sorry, Dave. Dave. I can't do that. Uh, so I'm Ow. going to uh, play on some audio from this. That's all you're going to get. Um, don't I play it and then give you the the choices, or do I do it before? I don't remember. You see I me. I do a little way. bit of both. Yeah. I don't remember what we do. do. Yeah, it's start playing it, and then you can. And because I already I see it. Well, you might want. Yeah, you're me. looking no, at. You know what? Play the. Here, I'll play, play it. Play I'll just the, play it. the audio first, and then we'll 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 ask the question. Yeah. What, you, what you think it is? Here you go. Oh wow! Is this advance wars? No, it sounds like it though. <laughs> You'll recognize this soon. Okay, you yeah. might. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. yourself. I, I instantly know what it is. Okay, but well, we'll, here, we'll here, give it. We'll give it a few seconds oh. for everybody to. Get yeah, a we'll just to play. We'll play along. Here are your choices: yeah. A. Power okay. Slave. B. Wasn't that a group? No, it was, a, it was okay. a game. Power Slave was an album by. Um, All right, right. Oh, that's right. Iron Maiden, I think. Iron Maiden. That sounds right. I think it was Iron Maiden. It was the big Egyptian one. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Power Slave. Was it B, Quake 2? Was it C, mm -hmm. Serious Sam? Or D, mm -hmm. Duke Nukem, Manhattan Project? Again, well, that's uh, no Power idea. Slave, Quake 2, Serious Sam, Nuke, Duke Nukem, Manhattan Project. What do you think? I have no idea what Power Slave is, but I know it's not Quake 2. I ate that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Um, and... I did play some Duke Nukem Manhattan Project, and I definitely don't remember Duke screaming. So <laughs> it's got to be that weirdo, Serious Sam, which I love that game. All of them. Let's All find of them. out if you're a Serious Sam game, and I'll play it. Let's find out if you're right. You are correct. It is Serious Sam. It was the original that came out in 2001. I bought it that week on PC. Yes. Again, I had to upgrade something. I don't remember what it was, RAM or some shit. Yes. Always, uh, every game that came out in the early aughts, late 90s, I feel like I had to do an upgrade for. But yep, anyway, yep. that game uh, is still great. And the giveaway there is those guys with bombs those on their hands. screaming with, ah! Yeah. They come running at you. Oh, I love those things so much. Yeah, uh, that was great. Uh, the newer, the yeah. brand newish one, 2020 or whatever it was, or whenever it came out. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, good it's still pretty, you yeah. know, straightforward, like just Didn't blow everything up, but it's fun. I like it. Yeah, it's just it's just constant. Just imagine constantly shooting crap, and everything's just coming at you, and it's just it's just constant mayhem, constantly. And I love it so much. So yeah. saying, well, we gotta do an episode on Serious Sam because that's such a different take on that type of game. Well, it is and isn't right because it was also yeah. a um, how do I explain it? It was a game that was designed to bring back the old doom feeling and quake feeling yes. at a time when we were getting away from that and doing like call of duty, the original call of duty or other military style shooters. And I think people were just longing for that arcade arena kind mm -hmm. of vibe. And this game definitely brought it, but it was also so weird and over the top. It was also so it's massive. Crazy. It was like, here are 300 guys at once. No way. Yes. How is that possible? Yes. Yeah. All these open world environments and all of these just, just crazy it's serious it's very serious it's serious sam enjoy mm -hmm. brian tell me about yours what's our platform and day or year all right hey you know what i decided to go back to the pc in 1998 the year that andrew was born that's my oldest son and oh. uh, he just had his own child so i was thinking what was i playing in 1998 while holding andrew uh with with one hand and playing video games with the other mm. and well, so that's what you get pc 1998 all right let's hear what we got <laughs> I like this music. Yeah, this music slaps. Can't tell what they're doing, though. Right. Well, this is the menu screen. Oh, I didn't this... want to make it too easy because, <laughs> or too hard either because it was like, hey, I was, I, I, I picked a racing game. So this oh, this is, is a racing game. Gonna be yeah. So you got you got you got your choices here: A, B, C, and D. We got A, Need for Speed Three, Hot Pursuit; B, Carmageddon; C, Speedbusters; D, Felony Eleven Seventy Nine. Oh, what? Okay, that was all menu. <laughs> <laughs> I got to figure this out for the menu. Um, this could be any of those. I mean, it's just, uh, that's hard. All yeah. right, Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit, Carmageddon, Speed Busters. You know, I'm kind of getting a Hot Pursuit vibe out of that. I'm going to say Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. Bing, you got Is it. it? And oh, the reason phew. why, I picked the game first, and then I was trying to get some game audio from it, and like, well, as soon as you start playing the game, it's like, wee. It's, it's cop stuff yeah. constantly yeah, and i'm like oh away. jesus yeah he'll get in like five seconds it will be it's a no-brainer i'm like well how about the music right at the very top when he's going through the menu i was like okay that'll work Hi, uh, <laughs> uh big recommend on the remake of hot pursuits real good yes. you should play that got it that 
I love that game so much because I didn't play Need for Speed. I, I love playing and racing, but man, when they added Hot Pursuit and the cops were on you and you had to keep it down low, you had to keep the you had to keep the heat off of you. Yep. Oh, Jesus. It's really good. So much fun. Yeah, it's really good. Highly recommend it. Uh, Have you seen I it? never played so, I mean, these other three. Looked. These other three never played them. Carmageddon, Speed Busters, or yeah. Felony Eleven at Seventy Nine. Never played any of that. They oh. all kind of had like I, at first, like I said, I was going to do some of the racing stuff. So I tried to pick things that might have cops in them. So I was like, uh, Need for Speed Three definitely had cops. Carmageddon. I was like, couldn't remember Speed Busters. That definitely sounds like a cop thing, right? And Felony Eleven Seventy Nine. I thought, oh, they're all race games. Yeah, surely I'll be able to fool him. But then once I listened to, it, I was like, no way, he's going to get this in five seconds. So if yeah. you looked at Need for Speed Three Hot Pursuit, in my mind, in my mind, this game is like cutting edge graphics. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, remember Need for Speed Hot Pursuit? That was so, it's so sexy. And then I went and watched some video clips of it, and I'm like, oh my god, hmm. they're just boxes. <laughs> they're just, there's no, there's no shadow. There's you know, there's like large block shadows, and you know, there's not like. There's not like shiny reflections on the cars or anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this looks ancient now. The trees look like, I don't know, not trees. Not they trees like anymore. Just, cardboard stand ups. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Cardboard standees. The cars are all kind of wonky. And I'm like, okay, so this is definitely a retro game. Maybe it's time for us to do some. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to read, read some of this stuff about Runabout slash Felony 1179. I'd never heard of this game. I hadn't either. Wow. I just went and searched. I said games, race games from uh, the late, uh, the late nineties, and there was a ton of them. Oh there yeah, there was there was a big whoop right around then. Yeah, there's a big whoop around it. Yeah, yep. you know what's still good? Um, still my favorite of those things of PlayStation anyway is probably oh Ridge Racer Four. I like Ridge oh, Racer so Four good. a lot. That's four a is Four has got some sauce, man. I think this 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 felony 1179 looks exactly like uh what is it Viper? Remember that game that was nothing but Vipers? <laughs> it was based on yeah the 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 yeah, Viper Dodge Viper. Yeah. <laughs> that used to make me laugh so hard because it was such a well they did one with the bug on the N64 the the Volkswagen bug what was that called? Yeah, Beetle uh, cross... Beetle Racing something Beetle. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, was it, that wasn't Midtown Madness, was it? Was no. there just a basic? No, Beetle it was too? called Beetle something. It had a word Beetle in it. It was Beetle absolutely hundred percent. Oh, Beetle Adventure Racing. That might have been it. Beetle Adventure, maybe. That was a hundred percent a com a commercial for the new Beetle, the newly designed yeah. Beetle, redesigned Beetle. But it was still like a really good racing game, and so sometimes that works. Like red, yeah. like uh, uh, Seven Up Spot or sp Cool Spot. That <laughs> yeah. shit worked. <laughs> Most of the time, that's bad, but that worked. It's weird how that how worked. ad games sometimes pull it off, and I don't know how they do it. Yeah, Blast Core. Oh my God, all these. I love I, race games, dude. So I much. love Blast Core. Is not really a racing game, though. That thing's like no, a, no, 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 no. I, like I just a, saw that while I was looking at the race games too. It's it's down here with the N sixty four stuff. I love that game. Ooh, yeah. they, you know what? I know Rare. I don't know who owns the rights. Probably Nintendo does, if I had to guess. Yeah. I don't think yeah, Rare owns so. it, so Microsoft can't do anything with it. But I would go for a new Blast Core, like a modern, mm -hmm. destructible environment Blast Core. Oh, man. Yes. Uh, well, there you go. We both won today. That feels good. Yeah. Nothing wrong good with job. that. We also have a little feedback from the listeners. Welcome to the Treasure Room. start with this one this is some feedback from here we have a name no name anyway this is a text uh, an email with no name email with no name this is a text that came to 801-471-0462 play retro thank you guys for the nostalgia hit i've been uh or sorry i've also passed my rg 35 xx to my kid and now i'm looking for something with a bigger screen for my older eyes thinking retroid or retroid pocket 4 pro uh, yes. I'm wanting to buy the stickers and listen, uh, sorry, a listener created with the play retro and different console schemes. We know who that is. That's Taz in our chat. Yeah. Um, it will be 3d printing a cover or I will be 3d printing a cover to protect analog sticks and buttons. Is there a link that I cannot find, uh, for the stickers? Um, I mean, they're not like things that are being produced all the time. However, I'll mm -hmm. bet if he reached out to Taz, an arrangement could be made. Uh, to procure said stickers, if I had to guess. Yes, and if not, we can always uh, do, I can I can middleman you a little bit. Yeah, we can facilitate we your Taz. needs. But if you yeah, join yeah, us on yeah, our we'll... join us on our Discord, frogpants.com slash discord Just do a search for Taz. You'll find him, especially in the Play Retro group. 
send him a thing and if he's if he he may say no it's up to him yeah. you know so do that and uh, but he also may say yes <laughs> he might say yes i don't know i don't want to <laughs> speak for taz and i don't want to speak for this anonymous person but i'm just saying i think you two can get get together yeah all right uh here's taz an email a cool guy taz is a great that. guy he's a wonderful guy he says he can hook him up in our chat uh, Brian and Scott says, A.G. Bobo, who sent an email to playretroshow at gmail.com. I need to tell you about my 14-year-old son. This kid has decided that the only good games are old games. He hooked up our N64 to our big TV and plays Goldeneye on it. He told me he wants an Ambernick for his birthday next month. What? Then last night, he took my old computer, a Surface 4 Pro, and installed Windows 95 via VirtualBox. He has been wow. playing Mist on Windows 95 all day today. I <gasps> fully support this sort of behavior. In short, I think the kids are going to be all right. Keep up the good work. The show is one of the highlights of my week, says A.J. Bobo. Oh, it's A.J. Bobo. Nice. Oh, yeah. AJ. Isn't that cool? That's cool. That is awesome. I love to hear the continuation. I was the same when I was a kid. You know, I was like, even though there wasn't as much nostalgia exploration that, that, that could be had because there's so much now, mm -hmm. but even back then, yeah, I was the same way. I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I love what's modern, but let's see what they had before. What was, what was in the before times? And would we call this kid 14 year old kid? We call him generation 14. alpha. Is that what we call him? I don't know. He's generation badass is what I would call him. <laughs> He's not Z. Cause these are like, you know, 2000 through 2000. I don't know what it is. But 14, no, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, if I had to guess 14, that means you're born in like what 2010, this kid, 29. You just you just go, it's exact. Wow, you did fast math, Scott. Did well, you realize you just did fast math? Sometimes I'm fast with the math. Sometimes I am wow. woefully slow with the math. So <laughs> um anyway, I think that's awesome. And I think your kid's cool. Me and too. you should tell him that we agree with his lifestyle choices. All right. Yeah. We don't even well, we don't think he's cool. We think he's rad. I think he's super rad. I also think this person rad. that called in this, to the show is also rad. And there's what he had to say. This is Wooj Man. Uh, just Wooj. calling to let you know that uh, it was recently brought to my attention that NBA Jam Tournament Edition, the arcade, uh, was released uh, in January 30 years ago. Uh, so it got me thinking, what is your favorite version of NBA Jam? For me, it's always going to be the one I grew up playing first, which was the Sega CD port, which was had great oh. arcade perfect sound. Um, but uh, kind of my favorite besides that would have to be the Wii version, um, oh. which uh, is way more fun than it should be. Um, motion controls are weird, but the weirdness made it great. Um, yes. Also, a fun factoid um, Tim Pitzrow, I once interviewed for a blog I worked on. Um, he actually is willing, and he actually, uh, for a fee, I think, will do recording. Tim Pitzrow is the voice, um, famous for Boom Shakalaka, Is It the Shoes, and Altitude with an Attitude. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I love I look, love that guy. Yeah, Woodman's awesome. Let me make you a uh, let me let me say if you take the arcade game out of the mix, which I actually think right. you should do because the arcade game had default settings that were designed to make you pump quarters into it, and it pissed me off. Yeah, that game was yeah. forced gambling, and I hated it. Yeah. Um, but I loved the game game part of it. So for me, my first home experience was the Super NES version of it, but my favorite version was probably. The 360 PS3 game they made oh, wow. called Unreal, or sorry, uh, Unreal, uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Is it tournament, Is that the Tournament Edition? No, that was already out. Uh, something else. Stream Rivals or something. Shit. Whatever it was. Now I can't remember. Hang time. Um, that was it. Hang time. I don't remember. It is the best they ever did, and it's still. If you bought it back then, you can still download it. No problem. Well, on, oh, on really? Xbox, I don't know about, I can't say for yeah. PS5, um, but it is still one of the most fun couch, like competitive things I do with my kids. We pull that out all the time. It still looks really good. Like it, that game held up visually. Uh, that's my favorite version of that series. Yeah. Like, and I love the old ones. Don't get me wrong. They're amazing. I My least favorite is the I'm, Genesis game. I don't think it's very good. Oh, that's funny. That I was gonna say, and and it might be my inexperience. Of course, I loved it in the arcade, so much fun. But my my greatest experiences were on the Super NES and the Sega Genesis, the two that I owned it on. Um, and I played in other places too. Anytime I would get something new, and there was an opportunity to play NBA Jam, of course, I'm gonna fire it up. But really, I can only speak to my love 
for the Super NES in the Sega Genesis versions. I like both of them for a little bit different reasons, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, that, but Super NES is where my heart was at growing up when yeah. I saw. And I get that. I, I mean, yeah. you know, of course nostalgia. it is. Nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgia. I get it. You know what I really Sorry. wish would have stuck around and had just as much, uh, you know, love thrown at it was NFL Blitz. Um, yes. It was, it preceded this. It was kind of the thing that established it all. It was the first game that had that freaking Voodoo logo on it from the Voodoo cards. Yes. Yes. And um, that kind of arcade football is still something I love to do. Oh, NHL right. Hits. I almost forgot about that. I love Hits. Oh, the Hits is so good. And NHL Hits 2000 or 2003, I think. Still, right. is GameCube, uh, PS2 era stuff. Um, unbelievable hockey game. Unbelievable. The, the fact that I can't just buy that someplace and up-res it to 1080p or something is a crime. I'm, I'm looking right now. Pisses and me off. My God, I never played NBA Hoops with a Z. Never played With hoops. big old shakalaka on the front of it. Really? I never played hoops. I didn't ever I never played this one. This I didn't new? even know this was one. It's a sequel to the NBA Hang Time and the NBA Showtime. I'm sure it was wow. just like uh so hey, cool. we need to get in on some of this NBA jam business. Oh yeah, right. for sure. Look at this. Yeah, this had... jam. It's just it's derivative hang time and showtime and all that stuff is derivative of it's it's all the same lineage of NBA jam. And yeah. I just never played hoops. Two thousand one, PlayStation, PlayStation Two, Dreamcast. Oh bet, my god, Dreamcast. I bet you never did because it's probably bad. It's probably a bad game. It's probably terrible, but you know what? Three, three v three. Oh, look at this! <laughs> look at this! Yeah, got some Bulls action on there. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that was around the time I was still mad at the Bulls. Freaking pushed off, yeah. Jordan, you <laughs> bastard. Uh, but you anyway, got Shaq in the front with a the baseball. I meant baseball. That'd be great. A basketball on fire. Oh, you know it's funny. I was just looking at the screenshot of this video we're playing. Um, the the play, person playing his name is Bibby. Oh, Bibby, funny. That's definitely not thanks, our Bibby, but Ibbit. yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to capture that for him later. So you can, <gasps> you can play the four play. players in the Dreamcast version. I could plug up every one of my controllers. Well, that's we why the that's why the Dreamcast games. version of uh, Bomb, Super Bomberman or Don't Bomberman, whatever it was, was amazing. Yeah. Oh, that Bomberman game. Right. Battle. Jack's on fire. Battle oh. something mm -hmm. Bomberman. Oh, so oh that's good. right. That's right. We talked about that on this. Best version of Bomberman ever made was that Dreamcast game. Yeah. So good. And the single player is actually excellent. People always forget. Anyway, that's going to do it for our uh, emails and our calls and stuff. If you'd like to be a caller or a texter, 801-471-0462 and playretroshow at gmail.com. We'll take care of the emails. Got a quee, uh, we got a quee? We got to do a quick one of these. Ludicrous kill. That's right. Let's get an Unreal report, an Unreal update. Uh, what's going on? What are our rankings this week? All right. So let's see if there's been much change. Not a lot of change on Unreal Tournament 99, but we didn't play this last Monday. So we still got Flapjacks number one. Two is Upright Night. Actually, I think Upright Night's kind of moved up. I don't think they were there before. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Denier at number three, Forest Surge, and... Number five, my favorite new character to pronounce, Sick Recky, bringing it up to number five and knocking Scott down to number six. Usually we don't mention the top six. I got I knocked down I might to as six. Well say Scott's Damn. There. I haven't been in enough yeah. is the problem. I need to get in there and defend yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's, it's secrecy, but I, it looks like Sick Recky to me. You can't, don't judge me. Now, we did get a chance to play <laughs> Unreal Tournament UT uh, 2004. Speaking of Sick Recky coming in, Killing it at number one. Uh, try to kill everything down to number two, three. Brack Flack. I think that's a new that's a new level. I don't think Brack Flack was there before. Frog Pants. And then rounding out the top five. Shock Effect. Yep. That's me. That's you. Um, real quick. So today is not that day because Brian's got a thing to drive to, and I have court five. So we're not going to yeah. be playing UT UT two K four today, but we are going to be taking registrations for Assault Map teams. Okay. Oh, that was so much fun last week. It was really fun, and we didn't have enough people, so we want to get enough people involved and also get the word out, which we did a terrible job of doing this last week. I didn't talk about it on any shows, so I wanted to <laughs> Amy, do that. Amy put in a lot of work for us. Fraggle did a lot of work, and I, I failed. Yeah, it was your fault. And yeah. Uh, so my, anyway, my we're gonna, we'll have more on that soon, but just check out the retro, or excuse me, the Play Retro group in Discord. We'll have links to how to register and stuff. We're going to create a simpler form. Uh, for people to to sign up, so it's just really easy for you. But basically, we just want to have some teams, and we want to do full assault mode in two K four. It's awesome. It's assault a great mode. mode is in in two K four is so much better than in ninety nine. 
it is just legit fun. Uh, the map we played, we, you know, we, you jumped in your tanks and you assaulted your way to checkpoints along the way. The maps are huge and fun. And, uh, man, we just, it was, it's a lot better than the Unreal Tournament 99 version. Let's oh, 100%. Like, the assault mode is, could not be, they couldn't be more starkly different. They're, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. And then they're even better in three, but nobody played three. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, more on that over at retrogib.com. Uh, before we go today, I want to th- uh, tell you that our next show is going to be all about system shock. Finally, we're going to talk about system shock. Shocking. I mean, we've yeah. been putting that off for two, three weeks because we just keep finding something to bump. But System mm-hmm. Shock is uh, about ready for its due. We'll talk about the original. We'll talk about that remake that came out not long ago and maybe the Played future it. of uh, Future Shock and all that. Or Future oh. Shock, System Shock. <laughs> but all that Bioshock in the middle, there were some pretty good games in there too. Yeah. Oh, and it's their save 50% off on the... Uh, there's that big old sale going on Steam right now. System Shock, 50% off. You can pick it up for like uh, 20 bucks or something. Well, I haven't been over there yet. I got to go look at what money I'm spending today because I know I'm buying games today. It's just going to happen. Yeah, man, it's going to happen. Steam's killing me this week, baby. Mm-hmm. These bastards. Oh, look Steam's at that. Down. That's a good one I want to buy. Hold on. Dang it, RoboCop is Rogue City is for 30 bucks right now. I bought that. That game's rot, That's red. supposed to be good. It is good. I played it. It's uh, good. Real good. Um, let's see. Uh, There's a good deal on... Where is it? Oh, uh, all the Stellaris DLC is on sale. I love that game. Yeah. Uh, Once the, again, we don't make no money off this crap. No. <laughs> uh, what's this one? Love Ooh, of the game. Sub, Subnautica Below Zero is finally on sale. Nine oh, bucks. I think I'm buying that. Oh, dude, that hell is a great yeah. game for nine bucks. Holy hell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, we just talked about 14 for their RPG mm-hmm. game. Uh Division 2 8 bucks. Come on now. This is crazy. Yeah. I'm buying hey, let's go them away. I'm going to buy that Dune um oh, What is Dune Imperium? Award-winning board game. What? What what? Board what, what? game for Doom. What what what? All right, there's a lot what I want. My butthole. <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's uh, going on. I also want to thank our patrons who are now getting wonderful benefits like no commercials ever, pre-show content every week, and other great benefits simply by joining us like Marker, Michael Furlong, Ben, and Mr. Zip. These are just three of our fabulous uh, uh, patrons, and we love them. Please go over to where they went, patreon.com slash playretro, and sign up today. Big thanks to everybody who supports their favorite retro podcast. It's going to do it for us. Go to frogpants.com slash playretro for everything else. Brian... Is there anything you'd like to say before I cut you off unceremoniously? Don't do that. Don't cut me off. Wait, no, you, Scott. No, you. No, you. Go play something retro. We'll see you next week. Get more at frogpants.com. Chrono Trigger. That's how the the dictionary says it. Chrono Trigger. (laughs) Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger.